Hi everyone, let's set the ultimate debate in bodybuilding. Should you avoid cardio at all costs or should you rather embrace it? In this video, I will show you a super interesting new study suggesting that a preconditioned muscle, a muscle that has been aerobically trained before, might experience more strain gains when the athlete does resistance training. Or, as six-time Mr. Olympia winner Dorian Yates sums it up nicely, you should do cardio only in your off days. Excellent advice if you ask me. Let's dig into the science. Hi, I'm Gomar. I'm a senior scientist at EDH Zurich, based in Switzerland. And for the last decade or so, I studied how different types of exercises induce muscle growth. So if you have watched some of my previous videos, you know that if an athlete engages in high volume of conditioning or, or aerobic training and combines that with strength training, there will be some kind of interference where strength and conditioning will be hampered to some extent. But you can also look at it from a less, let's say, negative point of view. It might be that low volume, potentially low intensity aerobic exercise can actually improve the strength gains at a later time point. This all has to do with the capillary to fiber ratio. So what does that exactly mean? The capillaries, you can look at them as micro vessels. So they deliver oxygen, but also nutrients to the muscle fibers. And a sedentary person usually has around two to three capillaries per muscle fiber. When you, for example, engage in high volume of conditioning, this ratio increases to four, five, six or more capillaries per fiber. Why? Because obviously the capillaries need much more oxygen as well as nutrient. The interesting part now, if you would only engage in strength training where the fiber sizes increase a lot, but not the capillaries because strength training has not been shown to increase capillary number or capillary efficiency, then you obviously would even decrease your capillary to fiber ratio. And this was kind of the hypothesis of the researchers uh, thinking about this study. They thought if an athlete would first increase their capillary to fiber ratio, so to perfuse or get more oxygen and nutrients into the muscle, they can actually benefit more from strength training at a later stage. That at least was their thought process. How did they do the study? They had 14 people eight males and six females. So that's always nice when you have both females and males in one uh, study. They were untrained people, so that's very important. They were not bodybuilders or some kind of endurance athletes. They were just normal people, usually uh, students, and they have a relatively low to moderate VO2 max of 39 to uh, 42, which is uh, average, I would say. But then the study setup was super clever, and that is also why I picked this study, because I think such studies should deserve more attention. So what did they do? They had a um, first six week of single leg training. So think about how fun that exercise would be. You sit, your, you put yourself on a Monarch or a, a cycle ergometer and you bike for 45 minutes at a low intensity with one leg. Then the other leg obviously did not uh, engage in any training. Then they had two weeks of rest, so no training at all. And then they had 10 weeks of bilateral, so both legs did resistance training. So one leg would be aerobically preconditioned with the bike and the other leg would not be aerobically preconditioned. And then obviously they want to know what the effect was of the aerobic preconditioning on the strength gains or on the molecular biology within the muscle. So here it gets interesting. As expected, the let's say the capillarization, so the perfusion of the muscle was better only after the aerobic training. So this is data, it's called CFPE, it's a difficult name for basically the amount of capillaries within the perimeter of a muscle fiber. So it actually is a good parameter to show how well a muscle fiber is perfused or how well it actually can be provided with oxygen. And you see on the right side that only in the, the dark gray box that only the AC, so the post aerobic conditioning muscle has a higher capillarization ratio, I call it like this for the next of the, the video, All right? So that's exactly what they wanted. You see also type one and type two here. Type one means the slow twitch fibers and the type two fibers are the fast twitch fibers. So they always differentiated in this uh, study. And then obviously the, the interesting part, the data. They took a muscle biopsy and they uh, cut 
cross-sectionally within the muscle fibers. So you can actually measure, measure the diameter of the muscle fiber. And what they see here in type 1 fibers, that after resistance training, so only resistance training, there is no increase in type 1 fibers. So this is something you typically see that, yeah, even a harsh a resistance training protocol can actually not increase your type 1 fibers. But the interesting part is that after the aerobic conditioning, so these are the gray bars, there's actually a slightly higher increase in cross-sectional area, so muscle mass gains in the type 1 fibers. And you see this even better, this effect in type 2 fibers. So in the white bars, these were not aerobically trained, and the gray bars are always aerobically trained. And after the resistance training, you see actually a slightly higher increase in the gray boxes, so the ones that have been aerobically trained. So this supports their hypothesis that there's a likely a beneficial effect of aerobic training before you engage in strength training, although the effects are not super massive and, and both groups actually increased their uh, total muscle mass, it's still something noteworthy because you can see that at least one thing is sure, that there was no negative effect of the aerobic preconditioning. That is clear. So what strengthens these results even more is that there was a correlation between this capillarization ratio, this CFPE, and also the cross-sectional increase in type 2 fibers. So this means that the people who had the most increase in capillarization also has the most increase in uh, cross-sectional area. And I think that's a, an important point, suggesting again that this capillarization could, for example, provide more nutrients so the muscle can build more proteins and also uh, get bigger, obviously. So the authors behind this study thought it's always the same. When you engage, let's say, 100 people into resistance training, for eight weeks, you always have responders, responders that gain 5, 10, 15% of muscle, but you also have people who are non-responders or at least low responders who don't gain too much muscle. And they wanted to know if this could be correlated with the amount of capillaries that there were in their muscles. And indeed, you see here the black uh, rounds, the, the black dots, are the ones who responded the best to this resistance type training. They also had the highest capillaries, both in type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers. So this supports the notion that if you don't respond well to resistance training, it might be that your muscle is not enough aerobically preconditioned. So that's something to think about. Before I want to go into the application of this data and how you can use it into your own training program, I want to quickly talk about Stry-V. So Stry-V is a, a software, a platform where coaches can program, can put on their uh, training programs for hybrid sports, for conditioning, for strength sports, and then athletes can have an app and check their training regimen. It's a super user-friendly, well-built app. And what is cool about Stry-V is that we are co-developing some of the features that I think are necessary for such programs. For example, integration of RPE or heart rate or even muscle oxygenation that you can then live see and also uh, support with your athletes. So if you're interested in using Stry-V as a coach or a programmer for your athletes, you're still searching for a software, you can always use the code that is popping up now on the screen. It will give you 10% off of your subscription and it also helps out the channel so we can provide these informational videos. Good, so how can you apply that information to your own training plan? If you are a strength athlete, a powerlifter, a bodybuilder, or even a crossfitter or a hybrid athlete who wants to improve their strength and their strength only, it's best to do most of the volume, 90 to 95% as pure strength training. And then during your off days, you can do some cardiovascular capacity training. You can do interval training or low intensity exercise training. Likely both are, are fine in this case. And important is that if you want to do the boat sessions on the same day, try to separate them by at least six hours. I have a, a large video explaining the interference effect between strength and conditioning. It pops up right here at your screen. If you're interested in that, you can always have a, have a closer look where I discuss in detail how you can approach this conditioning as well as strength interference. And then maybe something you haven't thought about is do those conditioning pieces in non-weight bearing modalities, such as, for example, rowing, skiing, biking. Try to avoid excessive or at least too much of eccentric 
uh, ground contacts such as running because some of the, the data indicates that this actually hampers the strain gains at a later part. All right, aerobic preconditioning, it's probably a thing. It is a good idea to have as much capillaries in your muscles to enhance the effect of strength training. Try to avoid too much concurrent training and at least separate your sessions by six hours and do most of the, the work into non-weight bearing exercises. All right, that was it already for today. You can find the link to the study I just discussed in the description. If you like this kind of content, please consider leaving a like. It takes only one second of your time, really helps out the channel. And also subscribe. And for now, see you in the next one. Ciao.